What is up guys? Welcome to our week three team builder for the GBA D-League. This week we are taking on Magic Activator and his Memphis Drizzlies. Uh, we are up 2-0, if you guys didn't know by now. Uh, if you guys missed any of the games, make sure to check them out. They're previous on this channel. Uh, you'll recognize the thumbnails. But anyway, uh, we are 2-0, uh, plus 6, I believe. Uh, we went uh, plus 4 week 1 and plus 2 week 2. So, yeah, we took down uh, two great opponents in um, Papa C and Aberforth. Uh, and uh, Abe I was kind of scared of, and I ended up beating him, so it was very nice. Uh, fortunate Leaf Storm miss, but I think Abe realized in the end that it didn't actually matter. I think the burn mattered more on Mammoth Swine, because it uh, restricted him from being able to crit my uh, Infernape with Ice Shard. Uh, I think I mentioned that during the video. But anyway, we've got a completely new matchup this time around. You guys can already see it on your screens. Uh, we've got uh, the Memphis Drizzlies, which I'll go over their team right now. He's got a Z-Landerous T, which is a massive threat in the format. Uh, Mega Venusaur, Milotic, Arcanine, Jolteon, Kartana, Komala, Gardevoir. That's a regular Gardevoir, by the way, obviously. There's a Mega Venusaur already. Uh, Minshaw, Miss Magius, and uh, there is an Armaldo as well. So, uh, which is his secondary Z user, I didn't mention that, but that's his second one. So, looking at this team, uh, I went over a lot of possible different options, but I noticed that he's got a lot of really potent offensive threats against me, and that I need to be able to cover as many as possible. That's what I've been doing week in, week out, up until now. So, I'm going to continue on that trend until it doesn't work anymore. So, starting off, uh, I first noticed that Zland OT is a problem. Uh, I noticed that uh, Miss Magius can be a very big problem, and that Gardevoir is an issue as well. So uh, we're going to cover those three mainly, as well as Kartana. I didn't mention that one, but Kartana is, is a very, very big threat to our team that you can see on the left. Uh, pretty much his stabs plus Night Slash can destroy me, so got to be very careful with that. However, the first thing that I noticed is that this Cresselia that you guys see on your screen in front of you, uh, does a lot of work to his team. He does not have a dark type, and uh, that means that I can run Mono Psychic on Cresselia, which I love. Uh, I've got Substitute, Calm Mind, and Moonlight, uh, Bold with uh, Levitate and Leftovers. I'll go over the EV spread really quickly. I'm just going to bring it up. But basically, uh, this set can completely shred through his entire team. Uh, I've got enough defense basically to take Landorus T's knockoff into, an, into a Swords uh, Dance boosted knockoff pretty reliably. Um, I've got a good amount of uh, special bulk as well. Max HP, obviously, with the 227. Uh, I got 36 EVs in Spadef, which I kind of... Uh, I couldn't remember why I had them in there until I just recently had another mock battle, and um, I realized that, well, I can actually take Shadow Balls from non-choice specs Jolteon, and from uh, non-choice specs Miss Magius at plus two. Um, doesn't break my sub. Not at all. <laughs> it just doesn't break. Uh, spell tag Miss Magius can break it, but anything else does not break it. So, uh, substitute in front of something like a Milotic, which I have EV'd uh, with 20 EVs in speed to beat any kind of speed creep that he could uh, potentially make without making his Milotic extremely fast, because I think it's base 80, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and I'm base 85. So, uh, his Milotic is probably coming as a check to my Infernape, uh, thinking about that, he's probably going to run a lot of defense. So uh, that means that I can capitalize on Milotic by getting up a sub on it and then call mining up and whatever switches in. Uh, he might want to stay in with his Milotic, potentially try to Dragon Tail me, for example, uh, or Toxic. So that's something that I can cover. Uh, and so, yeah, Calm Mind Psychic destroys his team. It destroys Mega Venusaur, uh, destroys the Lando. I considered Psy Shock over Psychic. However, the only thing standing in this thing's way from sweeping with Psychic uh, is Gardevoir. Calm Mind Gardevoir. So, I'm going to be able to deal with that. Uh, with the rest of my team decently well to the point where I don't feel like I need to run Psy Shock. I think Psychic is just overall better for his team. Hits Kartana harder, hits uh, Lando harder, Arcanine, uh, Milotic if it's physically defensive. All of these things, I don't want to have to go blow through PP just trying to wear things down, especially things with recovery uh, like Milotic, like Arcanine. So uh, Psychic is definitely a better option in this case. And of course, Moonlight for uh, general recovery. I am mostly physically defensive. I have 196 uh, defense EVs with a bull nature so I also have four special attack EVs this is actually uh, it's actually quite crucial uh, because it allows me to knock out uh, to two hit KO offensive Landorus T after stealth rocks when I'm at plus one guaranteed as opposed to if I didn't have the four EVs there's a slight sliver of a chance that he could live so 
yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much Cresselia. We'll move on to the next Mon on the team. So, like I said, Lando T, big problem, and I need some kind of check to it. I don't have the best checks on my team. There's nothing that I can really switch in on Lando setting up uh, without it blowing it back. So, I don't have a defensive check, but I have an offensive check, and that is Salamence. So, I'm bringing uh, Jolly Intimidate, Flyanium Z, Salamence. This is going to be the first time we have a Z Crystal on uh, one of our Mons. Uh, for the uh, GBA, for the D-League. Uh, first time I'm bringing these elements, and it's got Fly, Earthquake, Roost, and Dragon Dance. So essentially the idea behind this set is I can switch into Landorus. I am faster than Landorus, max speed, uh, Jolly. I have 180 ADVs with a uh, Jolly nature myself, so I outspeed Landorus. Uh, and I have 100 attack, 128 defense, and 92 HP. So the reason that I EV'd myself this way is that because after the Intimidate, if Lando goes for uh, agility, for example, as I switch in Salamence, if rocks are up on my side, which are tough for him to get up in the first place, uh, because Lando would have to be his rocker, or Armaldo. Armaldo I see not so much coming, however it is a decent rapid spinner against me, and I can hazard stack him, considering his only forms of hazard removal are Armaldo, Kamala, and... Um, uh, and Cartana, and most of those are walled by my Decidueye, which is also a, uh, a spin blocker. I know that Komala gets Shadow Club, but anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here. The point is, I have this defensive investment with the 92 HP and the 128 defense, so that uh, I can take a Continental Crush uh, if he's at minus one. So there's a very, very small chance that a max uh, attack Adamant Lando can knock me out with a Continental Crush after Stealth Rocks. In response, because I am the one switching in on his Landorus, my Z Fly after Rocks to no HP automatically KOs. If Rocks are up. If Rocks are not up, then I have a still a pretty good chance uh, of knocking out Lando. There's something like a 30% chance. And regardless, as long as Lando didn't get up in agility, I'm fine. And if it did, then it has to get it up in, a, in conjunction with a Swords Dance. And even at that, I still have something to revenge the Lando after. So I'm fine against Landorus. The set I'm, I'm fearing the most probably uh, is defensive, actually. Uh, that actually deals with my team decently well. And knockoff can still break my sub on Cresselia as long as I have my leftovers. He can run U-turn as well. It's a little bit annoying. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Defensive Lando is something that I'm not looking forward to and that can beat me. Uh, but he has to keep in mind that if he does bring defensive Landorus without any rock coverage or HP ice, then my Salamence can set up in its face. The reason I have a Roost on here is because if I do switch into Lando and then I go for a Z-Fly and knock it out and something like, uh, I don't know, Mega Venusaur comes in or Komala to get rid of hazards, uh, I can Dragon Dance and I can Roost up on Ice-type moves as well. Uh, and I can see if uh, certain Mons can even do anything to me, essentially. Like, if my Lotta decides not to carry Ice Beam for whatever reason, and I click Dragon Dance, and he goes for Scald, and he doesn't get the burn, then I can try to Dragon Dance up again uh, in its face, and then just go for Earthquake or Fly. So, that's the idea behind the set. I don't want Moxie, I need the Intimidate for Lando. Uh, it's really just here for Landorus. I don't intend to sweep with uh, Salamence. My sweeper is Cresselia, but if it comes down to it, I have a backup sweeper in Salamence. Obviously, Earthquake is really good uh, for things like Arcanine for um, the Venusaur if I don't want to go for Fly, if I don't want to give it free synthesis, uh, as well as the Komala because it's not so physically defensive. Same thing for the Gardevoir, obviously. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I do outspeed like Scarf Gardevoir. I don't outspeed Scarf Minshaw, so that's something I'm going to have to watch out for. Minshaw uh, is something on his team that I considered could be an offensive threat, but at the same time, I have a really good check to it, which you guys are about to see, which is Quillfish. Bakugo is back in week three. Fell Stinger kill week one and then basically died. This time, I expected to do a lot more work. It's a lot more of a defensive set this time around. I'm not bringing Focus Sash or anything like that. Uh, I'm Impish, Intimidate with Black Sludge. I have um, 212 EVs in HP, uh, 252 defense with a with an Impish nature, 4 attack EVs, uh, 20 speed F, and 20 speed. Now, the 20 speed, I think, equates to the same as uh, Cresselia, which puts it at 108. If you guys go back, you'll see that, but that is the case, uh, which also puts me faster than my Lodic. One of the reasons that I have Taunt on there. Uh, this also prevents things like Arcanine from, uh, from healing up. Potentially, uh, it could, it, I mean, 
Obviously, it's faster than me, but if I get off a taunt uh, as it tries to attack me or will-o-wisp me or anything like that, it has to switch out and it has to uh, come back in on hazards and it never got off a recovery. So uh, that's really good for me. Waterfall is just really nice for his team in general for things like Landorus if it feels it's safe to switch in. Uh, hitting things like uh, Gardevoir, Miss Magius especially, uh, and Mean Shao. I need a way to hit Mean Shao. I'm not just going to sit there, switch in, and not be able to do anything to it. That's ridiculous. So Waterfall is nice coverage for his team. Uh, being as that I can switch into Arc nine really reliably even on uh, adamant wild charge unless it's banded then i take a little bit more but i still don't take half after um uh, after black sludge so i can pain split all my health back but uh essentially this thing's role this thing's biggest role is to spike stack uh magic uh and it can do it really really well because it can come in on things like Milotic so long as it's not competitive uh, i can come in on arcanine it can come in on things like komala and uh and especially mean Shao. like this is my biggest check to mean Shao, obviously to prevent it from spamming high jump kick against me uh or knockoff or u-turn and uh i can just start getting up spikes and spikes are so so good against that team like look at it arcanine mega venusaur milotic uh cartana doesn't appreciate it uh, jolteon if it wants to keep volt switching it's not going to be able to komala doesn't like taking the damage gardevoir mean shout like almost his entire team is grounded it's really just miss magius and uh landorus that are off the ground everything else is grounded so spikes are so so strong and the fact that like i mentioned before his forms of hazard removal are not that reliable they're, they're coming from very slow mons or a mon that doesn't appreciate having to run uh defog in cartana so it's like his team doesn't look like it's too hazard weak but when you stack up spikes it's it gets really really dicey for a team like that so that's one of the main reasons that I think it's one of the weaker teams uh, in the drafts. Uh, not so much that I know the player because I don't know Magic too well. Uh, obviously, I'll know him a little bit better after this week. But um, like, just it's it's not a kind of draft that I would want to have. Uh, not because I'm too keen on like needing hazard removal, absolutely, but I like to have at least one Mon that can do it well, and I don't feel like he has that, so I'm going to try to take advantage of that and spike stack him. Uh, Taunt is really nice for Milotic, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that, but it's very nice for Milotic, so uh, it's also kind of nice for Venusaur uh, as well, because I think Venusaur is outsped uh, if it's min speed, so that's another reason that I'm running uh, this 108 speed on two of my Mons, Cresselia and... Uh, and Quillfish is that I can set up a sub on Venusaur and I can taunt Venusaur prevent it from recovering so that's really nice. So uh, that's pretty much Bakugo moving on we're uh, talking about the fish quite a bit uh, but my next mon is a check to is Cartana. Uh, it's something that actually does really really nicely against his team. Now one thing I do want to mention is that I don't expect Mega Venusaur to come in this game uh, for a lot of different reasons. One Thunderous gets Psychic uh, Salamence is potentially Z Fly, which in this case it is. Uh, as much as Thick Fat helps, it still doesn't appreciate taking Flare Blitzes. And Venusaur doesn't wall anything necessarily on my team. Like, it doesn't do a good job at walling my offensive threats, except for Mega Blastoise, which, if you look at the rest of his team, doesn't do well against it anyway. So, uh, if I see Mega Venusaur, I will be very surprised, uh, like, extremely. But, uh, just in case, we do have. Alphonse the Metagross, once again another Mon back from week one. We have uh, Adamant, Clear Body, uh, Colberberry, I'll explain that in a second. But we are Zen Headbutt, Bullet Punch, Hidden Power Fire, and Stealth Rock. So this is my primary rock setter, obviously. Uh, I pretty much rely heavily on Pillaswine and um, and Metagross to get up rocks. Infernape is not going to be that often a rock setter, so um, Metagross and Pillaswine are going to have to pick up a little bit of the work. Uh, but I do have other forms of hazards and Quillfish, so that's nice. Now I have Zen Headbutt. Specifically because it does hit his team really well uh, between Mean Shao, Miss Magius doesn't like to take it, uh, especially Venusaur, that's the big thing. Um, but just in case he brings Venusaur, I need Zen Headbutt. Like, that's that's 100% I, I need Zen Headbutt. Uh, another really cool thing is that I could have run Ice Punch, by the way, uh, because I do have Clear Body, and that prevents me from getting intimidated by both his Arcanine and his Landorus. Now, the thing is, Ice Punch hits uh, Landorus and Earthquake hits uh, Arcanine, but Zen Headbutt hits them both neutrally. So I'm going to opt for Zen Headbutt just because it hits the team better. Bullet Punch is there because, as I mentioned before, there's a chance the Supersonic Sky Strike doesn't take out Landorus. And if it gets up an agility, even if I have a Choice Scarfer, which I do, um, then I don't necessarily outspeed it. So I need a form to revenge it, and priority is the best way of doing that. So Bullet Punch is going to come in clutch. I am max attack, uh, not max attack, excuse me. I'm max HP. Uh, with 32 defense, 120 attack with an adamant nature, and 104 speed, which puts me at 103 now. I could have gone to 108. However, I don't feel like I need to with this mon because 
Um, I don't mind not being faster than Milotic because I don't really do anything to Milotic. Uh, and I think I, outspe I outspeed Mega Venusaur if I'm not mistaken. I have 104 speed, so I think it was for Mega Venusaur. I'm just going to check that really quickly. Venusaur, uh, default, Mega, uh, hits 101. Yeah, it hits, uh, well, actually it hits 100. So I am faster than Mega Venusaur with like 8 speed or 16 speed, whatever it is. But uh, I am faster than that. So I decided not to speed creep Milotic, not to speed creep... Um, whatever else can can hit that 108 speed, so uh, I decided to keep it simple and just make sure that it can outspeed the Venusaur so that I don't get hit with like a random earthquake or a, uh, a knockoff, a hidden power fire, anything like that. And now to explain the uh, really interesting part is that I do have a Cobra Berry now. A lot of you might have seen this coming, but uh, I have hidden power fire. This is specifically for the Cartana, so Cartana can be a threat if it starts to set up. I've seen, uh, nine, I think it's uh, something like 20... 2 IV, I'm not sure what it is on level 50, but I know on uh, on level 100 it's 19 IV. Uh, timid Nature, Cartana with Sword Stance, and that can do a lot of damage to me because it gets speed boosts, right? So, obviously, uh, Thunderous can resist its dual, uh, dual stabs, but so can Metagross, and Metagross does it a little bit better because it actually baits the Night Slash without taking too much damage because of the Culber Berry, and can actually revenge Cartana with Hidden Power Fire. So that's really, really cool. Uh, plus, Thunderous doesn't have a good matchup, so I needed something else uh, to deal with it, and why not bring a Stealth Rocker along, uh, along the way? So, this is a very, very nice uh, Metagross set. It has done a lot of work for me in my mocks. Uh, it's done exactly what I needed it to do. It's bullet punched a Gardevoir, it's hidden power fired a Cartana, and took a, a Night Slash. It's gotten up rocks, and it even Zen headbutted a couple of times. It didn't get a Zen headbutt off on a Venusaur, but I need it there just in case. So that's Alphonse, the Metagross. Next up, we have Ace back with us this week. Um, once again, Choice Scarfed. I don't like repeating sets too often, but in this case, I kind of need to. Uh, because if for whatever reason I don't damage Landorus enough, or if his Miss Magius is uh, Choice Scarfed, or if his Mean Shao is Choice Scarfed, uh, his Guard of War, all of those mons potentially, anything outside of like Jolteon Cartana, I need something to revenge them because I don't have reliable revenge killers for those. So uh, while I do have a switch into Miss, Ma uh, to Miss Magius as well as into uh, Mean Shao if they both are Scarfed, uh, I do want to make sure that I have something to revenge kill them, and uh, Landorus as well, in case it doesn't get up an agility, let's say it just goes straight for the uh, the Continental Crush on the Switch, and it gets a crit, for example. Like, that can happen. Uh, I, I feel like I just jinxed myself, but let's hope that doesn't happen. Anyway, I do need some kind of revenge killing. Uh, Flare Blitz Earthquake is nice coverage for his team across. Uh, Earthquake does hit the uh, Arcanine, that's the main reason I have it. I didn't have a reason to put anything else in that slot, because I am running Toxic, and Toxic is nice because his two main switch-ins to Infernape are going to either be um, Landorus or Milotic. I, I heavily expect Milotic. Arcanine can switch in as well if it wants to, that's why I have Earthquake. Uh, I don't see Venusaur coming in the first place, so that's why I'm not too worried about it, but I do have U-Turn to gain momentum on it, potentially getting Cresselia set up a substitute uh, in its face, so... Uh, it's a pretty straightforward set. I am jolly this time around because I do want to outspeed uh, Miss Magius and uh, the Mean Shao. Unfortunately, I cannot outspeed Scarf Cartana, uh, but I have a lot of speed to the point where um, he would have to be max speed Cartana uh, specifically for my Infernape uh, with a Choice Scarf to be able to outspeed me. And if he's Choice Scarfed, he's not a problem. So. Uh, I'm not worried about that, but I do outspeed every other Scarf on his team outside of Cartana and Jolteon, so uh, it's really nice. And uh, yeah, it's, that's Infernape, that's Ace. Uh, I'll talk about the EVs for a second. I have 12 in HP, 4 in defense, 4 in spadef, uh, 236 with the speed. We already talked about that, and max attack. So it's it's really, uh, it's probably my least diverse set on the entire team. Uh, actually, I lied. The next set is probably even less diverse. So uh, I did mention that I have a little bit of trouble against Mag Magius. One of the most annoying sets that I can see coming is Trick Nasty Plot. Yes, that's right. Trick with Nasty Plot, because as soon as the item goes away, he can Nasty Plot in my face. So, um, the only remedy I really have to that... Uh, well, let me talk about what Mon was initially initially in the final slot, uh, and that was Decidueye. I was initially going to bring Decidueye, because Decidueye switches in on my Lotta quite well, and uh, it can also trap things with Spirit Shackle. It's a spin blocker, which I felt like I needed, absolutely, because I was spike stacking. Um, and he's, he's got a Kamala and Armaldo. Armaldo does really well against me because it's bug and it's got a ground coverage. But realistically, um, the bigger threat is Miss Magus. And it came in all my mocks. 
and uh, after my very first mock, I realized just how much of a big threat it was. So I decided to replace the Sidui with Blair the Umbreon. So once again, the most basic set you can imagine. It is a set on uh, Showdown, but it's Foul Play, Wish, Protect, Heal, Bell. But there's a reason that this set is the standard set. It's because it's really good at what it does. So unfortunately, I do have to worry about Trick on the uh, Miss Magius, but... I do have foul play, so I'll I'll just foul play the Miss Mag if it tries to get up uh, nasty plot in my face. It's gonna get to it KO'd by foul play, and it won't knock me out even with a crit dazzling gleam at plus two. So there's that. Um, mainly for Miss Mag is I need to make sure that I have a switch into that thing because Shadow Ball tears through my team. Salamence doesn't want to take it. Uh, Metagross and Cresselia certainly do not. Quillfish is there for other things. So, and Infernape, I think I mentioned Infernape, but anyway, um, yeah, the, uh, the four, uh, right after Thunderous, those four mons especially do not want to take Shadow Balls, so, uh, yeah, I, I need this thing, uh, there's, there's no contemplating it. Obviously, uh, Gardevoir can take advantage of me, but Gardevoir does have to deal with Metagross, and while Bullet Punch doesn't knock out a Gardevoir from full, uh, even though I am very, uh, attack invested, um, it still puts in range of, uh, like, after Rocks, it puts in range of U-Turn and Flare Blitz from Infernape, so, um, I need Umbreon from his Magius specifically, uh, Foul Play deals with other things on his team as well, like, plus two Cartana will die, um, because its attack is so damn high, uh, plus two Landorus will more than likely die as long as he doesn't have too much HP investment, uh, Arcanine doesn't like to take it, and Komala certainly doesn't like to take it because its attack is almost double its defense, um, even Mean Shao doesn't like taking foul play on the switch, so it's it's a really good move. Wish protect, obviously. Uh, protect is mainly there for high jump kick, actually, because if I if I want to play mind games and make him think that I'm always going to switch into Quillfish on Mean Shao, that's not always the case. If I can protect it its face and make it take 50% of its health, then I'll do it. Uh, Wish is really nice for the rest of the team as well. Uh, it's really good for Infernape, for Cresselia specifically, uh, and even for Quillfish. Like that defensive core of Umbreon and Quillfish is really really nice uh, against him and uh, heal bell is mainly there because should his mylotic be faster than my Cresselia and not be a flame orb variant one it has to worry about my umbreon coming in on its toxic uh and it getting toxic in return and i have heal bell secondly if it does manage to get a toxic off on my Cresselia uh and I don't want to necessarily set up Crest in that exact moment or lose it, uh, then I can go into Umbreon and heal Bell off the um, the Toxic. And that gives me really good information into his Milotic set because, one, if it's not Flame Orb, it's not taking hits too well from Infernape, actually, especially with Hazards up. Uh, obviously, it can take a Flare Blitz, but Earthquake is going to hurt, uh, U-Turn is going to hurt, and that gives me a free switch in into something like... Uh, Quillfish to taunt it, or even to Salamence and click um, uh, click Z Fly. Uh, one set that I did see, actually, I just want to talk about this real quick. One set that I did see, uh, one of my mock games, shoutouts to a drama, was Adrenaline Orb Competitive Milotic, and that actually just tore me up. Like there was nothing I could do <laughs> to that thing. So I'm really, really hoping not to see that thing. Obviously, I can sort of um, deal with it with Umbreon, but at the same time, I'm going to run out of Wish Protects and Foul Plays uh, against that thing, and I don't want to getting up to plus two. So hopefully he doesn't bring that. Hopefully he brings Defensive, because that deals with Infernape a lot better. Uh, but yeah, uh, Adrenaline Orb Competitive. Definitely something to watch out for. Everything else I think I have covered with this team. Uh, of course, we have Blair, Ace, Alphonse, Bakugo, Grandina, and Serenity going into this game. And uh, I won all of my mocks except for the first one where Adrenaline Orb, um, Adrenaline Orb Competitive Milotic uh, did work. And Miss Magius crit my uh, Quillfish turn one and then proceeded to uh, destroy whatever else it was, I can't remember, but I thought it was locked in because I, I was sure it was Specs, and then I, I think I went into Decidueye and it got blown back by a Shadow Ball, so yeah, uh, not the greatest time, um, but that won't happen again now because I have Umbreon, so yep, uh, no Spin Blocker, but we're, we're gonna have to deal with it, uh, hopefully Hazards come through, Spikes and Stealth Rock are gonna be really, really nice against him, it's gonna really capitalize on his forms of recovery, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the team, guys. Uh, I'm really glad that we're 2-0 up. Hopefully we can make it 3-0. Next week we are taking on Jolt. 
So if Jolt and I can both remain undefeated, uh, I don't know his week three result yet. Uh, when I'm recover, uh, when I'm recording this, I don't think any week three games uh, have been played up until this point. So yeah, uh, if Jolt ends up winning his week three, then uh, we both go into our week four match against each other undefeated as the only two undefeated teams. So I'm hoping that happens. That would be an awesome week four. Uh, I would love that. Very similar thing happened in the GPC, actually, against Zazo, but we did not come out on top on that one. That was a, a thrashing that I received from Iron Flash Gaming. But anyway, uh, that's it, guys. If you guys did enjoy it, as usual, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure to check out my opponent and anything GBA-related in the description down below, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.